Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 129th St. Paul Winter Carnival. Today we're gonna celebrate the uh, Grand Day Parade. It's the coolest celebration on Earth. It's brought to you by SPNN-TV. My name is Tom LaSalle. I was the 2009-2012 Commodore of the Aquatennial, and with me, I'm Brent LaSalle. I was the 2011 and 2012 captain of the Aquatennial. So they bring us over to Minneapolis, from Minneapolis to get to announce your parade every year. It's a little warmer this year, so it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. The parade won't be to us for a few minutes, so before the parade gets here, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Steve Shoemaker. Steve is a uh, long-time festival involvement. He's uh, been involved in building many, many floats over the years. His father, Go Gordy Shoemaker, started quite a while ago. In fact, Gordy would have been 100 here this week, right? He would have been 100 on Thursday. He actually passed away 15 years ago. So that's a winter carnival guy. Yes. <laughs> well, Steve. Actually, actually, two weeks before the winter carnival is when he passed away. Oh, that's too bad. Well, Steve, listen, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of what you've, you and your family have done? Well, my dad uh, worked for Snyder's Drugstores downtown here, and in 1937, when they brought the Winter Carnival back after being canceled for the Depression, Snyder's, as well as many, many other companies, decided they wanted to participate in a big way. My dad worked running the display department, so it fell to him to build their float, which was his first float he ever built. He built several more for the Winter Carnival, and then built the Snyder's entry for the first two Aquatennials. Then he went on to uh, uh, fight in the Navy during World War II, was at Normandy, and ended up actually at Iwo Jima. He came back in the Winter Carnival, didn't have a float builder, so they set him up in business in 1946, and uh, from that time on, he built a, the count is somewhere probably m over 1,000 parade floats in the 50 years since that he had built those. Now, you got involved in this at a pretty young age, didn't you? I actually started, I, I was the last, I'm the youngest of the family. I started, I was 12. <laughs> I started building uh, parade floats in the 1973 Aquatennial, and I remember my very first job was sorting Jeep tires. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done parades, uh, or floats, you worked around the country, haven't you? Oh, we've, we've done everything imaginable. We've done a presidential inaugural in Washington, uh, Kansas City, Chicago, Houston, Dallas, Baltimore, LA. Uh, Dad actually helped start the Seattle Sea Fair in Seattle, Washington. So what, talk a little more about what you've done with the Winter Carnival. Well, it would probably be quicker to tell us what we haven't done with the Winter Carnival. Uh, it was all the floats that we built. We used to decorate Landmark Center, uh, where we lit up the front of the building with lights and the inside quartile where we hung lights straight down. Incidentally, we were the first people to do that in Minnesota. We just had lights hanging down. And Dad was co-chairman of the Queen's Coronation Committee for 20 years from the late 40s to the late 60s. So he was in charge of putting that show on. And his duties during the Winter Carnival is not only bring down two dozen floats at a time, he was in charge of the floor operations of the auditorium, so it was up to him to make sure the show moved through that, the auditorium the way it was supposed to. So he had a business as well as uh, quite a bit of volunteer work. Mm -hmm. and one of the things that's unique about festival folks is many, many of the people you'll see today are all volunteers, the people who put on the parade. And, and as uh, Steve talked about his dad, most of that work he described was done as a volunteer. You know, what it, I was surprised when I first met you and we talked about building a float. Uh, a lot more goes into building a float than you might think. And you've got, uh, the real trick is you have to be able to drive a float. That is the tricky part. Some of them are incredibly easy there will be a trailer pulled by a vehicle we like to use the old willie's jeep which was just a fantastic vehicle to use cover it and decorate it to match the float and you just drove it through the parade others you drove from perhaps behind where the jeep was built into the frame more often than not completely blind you had to rely on navigators on the outside to tell you if you needed to go left or right or, or slower or faster but well, then you also have to be able to strip these down so you can haul them. 
Uh, somewhat. The, the big self-propelleds that we used to make, we used to make them in one piece and haul them from our shop to downtown, usually at a crawl 10 to 15 miles an hour, which when our shop was in Roseville wasn't too bad, or we had one over here in St. Paul, it was great. Blaine wasn't very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty tough to do that. Well, you're going to be in the parade today, aren't you? Yes, I actually am marching with the uh, World War II reenactors, uh, sponsored by the Commemorative Air Force out of the South St. Paul Airport. And uh, I'm falling in with a group representing the Marines of, of the uh, Korean War. Well, Steve's going to, you guys all should watch for Steve. He'll be back uh, a little before halfway through the parade. You got to get your. You got a ways to go now to get back to get ready. Uh, probably a mile. Well, it depends upon how far up they are in the lineup. So I'm thinking probably not as far. I <laughs> bet they haven't started yet. Yeah. Well, Steve, thanks for joining us. Why don't you? We'll uh, we'll look for you here in about a, probably an hour. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Take Great care. All right. Next, folks, we want to introduce you to one of our uh, our past Boreases. We talked a little bit before we got started about how King Boreas works. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce you to Steve Schmidt. He is uh, Boreas 69, and this is his 10-year uh, anniversary, Steve. Yes, it is. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. We okay. hear you. Yeah. yeah, 10 years out, 2005. So why don't you tell the folks a little bit about how you got involved in Winter Carnival? Well, I uh, actually, I worked, for, I worked with for NSP XL Energy, and I traveled around to different divisions in the company, and I wound up at Rice Street, in St. Paul, and I am a St. Paul guy, so I was familiar with Winter Carnival, but I was asked to be a North Wind in 1997. So I was part of the Royal fi Family in 97, and then I got involved with the board, the Festival and Heritage Foundation. I chaired it for a couple years, and then I was asked to be Boreas uh, in 2004, the year we had the Ice Palace. So that's kind of... It's quite a history. Yeah, so Steve, what, is it, what does being a Boreas entail? I think a lot of people watch the parade but don't know what goes on <laughs> behind the scenes. Well, it, it entails a lot more, I think, than people actually think. That's probably a Commodore, too. But um, no, you, you know, you start out, you've got the first 10 days of Carnival. We made, we made over 100 appearances the first 10 days. You basically live at the St. Paul Hotel, and you go to schools, you go to nursing homes, you go to businesses, you go to hospitals, you, you travel around, you go out of state, you go out of the country, you go to Winnipeg. We go to Bradenton, Florida, Macon, Georgia, San Antonio. But these people come to our coronation also, so there's a lot of reciprocal stuff going on. Well, you do a lot of uh, community work, too. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Your citizens, things like that. Yep, yep. I'm involved with Wilder Foundation. I'm on a development committee. I do stuff with the Boy Scouts of America. Um, I've, I've been involved with uh, a couple other nonprofits. Vulcan Charitable Contributions, VCC which is a 501c3 nonprofit that's, that's giving money and scholarships out to uh, University of Minnesota students. So yeah, I'm involved. I've been retired now six years, but I feel like I'm working more now and getting paid less. <laughs> but Steve, we just, uh, we just uh, laid out who the new family is for these people. Can you talk briefly about some of the roles people uh, fill in the Winter Carnival family? Okay, uh, as far as roles go uh, with the royal family, are you talking specifically? Yeah, you, ha you have the, the king, queen, and prime minister are kind of the three, I call it the three-legged stool. They're, they provide the leadership to the royal family, but you got a north, east, west, south wind, and then you got a north, east, west, south princess. And then you got the royal guard that basically protects the royal family from the Vulcans throughout the year. However, we lose uh, at the torchlight parade. But uh, maybe, I think we're, maybe I think, not this yeah, year. Don't give not, it away. Not this year. I think we're losing right now, actually. But uh, yeah, so you, you know, the royal family consists of about 18 people. Then Klondike Kate is part of our little deal, and uh, everybody has their skit. But the, you know, you think of the king and queen. We're kind of the show part of it. You got the prime minister, which is really probably the toughest job because they're the ones that have to organize everything, uh, make sure you're on the bus on time, off the bus, get to the different events. And like I say, we made 300 appearances our year. You made them as a family. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and, and and that's how many people? Well, 20, about yeah, 20 that's, people. That's quite a job to get 20 people somewhere. The prime does have a difficult job. Yeah, yeah. And that's tough. all volunteer work, people. Nobody's being paid to do they're, that. They're right. all volunteers, yep. And those, uh, probably, what, 150 of those are things like nursing homes and uh, children's hospitals, yep. uh, Ronald McDonald House. These are, these are not high profile. They're hard work, good civic work. Exactly. We, I remember going to some 
Alzheimer folks homes and stuff like that I mean people they didn't even know but you know you bring a smile to their face or a tear to their eye and they just love it and it makes your day well there's something about showing up in costume and uh, everybody's uh, attitude changes and everybody's a lot of fun in the family yeah well people if you if you want to be part of winter carnival can they do it how would they do it well I mean it I, you could get involved uh, there's different organizations there's the North Wind organization there's the West Wind organization. I would seek out somebody in the family, in the royal family, and express some interest, and uh, I'm sure they can make, make you or get you introduced to the right people. Otherwise, you can go to the St. Paul Winter Carnival, St. Paul Festival and Heritage Foundation. There's a website. Anybody in the office could put you in touch with someone to, to make sure you get enrolled. And then I think the coronation, as far as the women go, with the uh, Snow Queens and stuff like that, that's got their own program. Well, people ask, is it, is it hard to become part of it? It's not my observation has been, if you want to be a part of it, yeah. you're going to be welcomed. You'll you, find a you role. Can, yeah. You can definitely be part of it. And just one last thing here, or before. Oh, more than that. Okay. Um, um, we're going to be looking for a lot of volunteers and a lot of different capacities coming up. Now, you notice here in Rice Park, we've got this ice wall. Uh, this was our first attempt this year now to, to build something with ice harvesting ice out of Lake Phelan, building this ice wall. We're going to do something in 2016, probably a little bit bigger, 2017 a little bit bigger, and 2018 we're looking to build another ice palace here in St. Paul. Uh, and that'll be in conjunction with the 2018 Super Bowl. And uh, we've been talking with the Super Bowl committee and a couple other people, and there's a real strong commitment by everybody that this is going to happen. So. Uh, we need people to help us harvest ice. We need people to haul ice. We need people to work down here to shovel, uh, you know, wood chips around to haul cables or whatever. So we're looking for a lot of volunteers coming up to do a lot of good work and, and make St. Paul really a, a spot on the map here in 2018. And kids, if you like the movie Frozen, this is an opportunity to see what they were doing. Tell them what harvest ice means. Well, if you didn't get a chance to see it this year out at Phelan, uh, we actually hired a group out of Spicer, or yeah, Spicer, Minnesota. It's called We Cut Ice, and these guys have been doing this for a long time, and they're pros at it. But hopefully in 2018, we'll be doing our own cutting. But they come down here with these saws, and they, they cut. They basically go out on the lake, you score the ice, and these blocks run somewhere between 350 to 450 to 500 pounds, and uh, they score the ice, and then they basically got this saw, and they cut this stuff, and then they've got an actual machine where you move this stuff around and get it up on this uh, conveyor system. Comes up the conveyor onto trucks, and uh, we've got forklifts and other things there to pick it up and move it around. But that, that's a major job in itself, just harvesting the ice, haul it down here, then offload it, and uh, build the structures that we need to build. So it's just like Frozen. Oh, it's Frozen. It's the start of the movie Frozen. Yep, yep, exactly. I would strongly encourage you, though, to, to come and try to join the Winter Carnival and, and similar organizations in the area. As we mentioned before, we're from across the river, the Minneapolis Aquatennial. It's an extremely rewarding experience to be a part of. Um, if you want to talk for a minute, go ahead, Steve. Well, talk, talk, Steve, a little bit about the relationship with other festivals and the fact oh. who's here this year. Well, uh, th I think we've got somewhere between 50 to 60 uh, what they call IVR, International Visiting Royalty. <clears throat> so we've got festivals from Winnipeg. The Festival de Voyageurs are down here. Uh, we've got people from Bradenton, Florida. Make it Aquatennial is here. Yep. Uh, San Antonio is here. Wyoming, Riverton, Wyoming, the, the Cowboys, uh, La Crosse, Oktoberfest. Um, and, and, you know, La Crescent, the Apple, Apple, I think it's Apple Fest down in La Crescent. Yep, yep. But I mean, and there's other festivals. We probably have over 90 visiting princesses from all over Wisconsin, Minnesota, the small towns, all these towns, whether it's Pine City or Lakeville or uh, Mankato. There's people from all over. So they come here to our festival. We try to go to their festivals. We try to show up for their parades in the summertime. And, and recognize them and acknowledge their people. And, uh, but, but there's a lot of community 
a lot of connections meeting with all these different festivals. Yeah, we probably go to 50 coronations during the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the other thing, too, is these, uh, everybody gets to know each other because you travel together. The Aquatennial and the Winter Carnival travel to all those places together. Yeah, they do. Uh, and we get to know uh, the, the group that uh, Steve mentioned that's here. They'll come back this summer for, winter, for uh, Aquatennial. We'll all go to San Antonio together to, uh, to celebrate uh, their, their festival, Macon, Georgia, Bradenton, Florida. So it's a, it's a lot of fun and a lot of uh, com camaraderie, camaraderie, camaraderie as, you go, yep. as you go around. The, uh, the, only, the only thing what I'd like to do is Aquatennial has it really good because I think they go to Japan, don't they? Not anymore. No, not anymore. No, okay. no, that, that ended in, uh, I believe, the year... You, you're I two before your I started. Oh, okay. Well, Ted might have been the last one to go. Uh, they, the, what happened there is uh, what a lot of festivals experienced here. They had a downturn in their economy okay. that was uh, pretty severe earlier than we had, and their festival fell by the wayside. From what I understand, it was a pretty spectacular yep. uh, uh, event. The, uh, I think they heard I was coming. That was the end of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, oh. so, what, so, so today... We're going to see a whole flock of boreases. What do you think? Is it a herd, a flock? Uh, it, it's well, I, I'm not. Sh I'm not totally sure what you'd call them. Uh, a troop? A Maybe troop. There you go. A troop. on my shoulder talk, here. T talk a little bit about Star Boreas. Well, the Star Boreas is the organization that um, you join. You become a member after you serve your time, and you got to be accepted in the Star Boreas. And we have a chancellor. Uh, person that kind of runs the organization and and we do a lot of things we do a lot of things right now uh, there's an organ there's a event called the Sal Libido which is uh, a dinner it's kind of a fundraiser for us and uh, Sal Libido was a north wind gotta, many many years stop. ago and um, his wife Corky is still around today but we do something we ra raise some money in their name, and uh, we do some charitable things. We give money out, and uh, it's just it's just a good group of guys that you get to know over the years. And we show up at this diff different events. We have dinners, we have lunches, a lot of good camaraderie. Terrific, Steve. We got a parade coming here in okay. a few minutes. You're going to see, uh, in, in addition to the Star of Boreas, we'll be talking about the Titans organization, the West Winds organizations. Each wind has their own, and Vulcan has their own. And one of the great strengths of Winter Carnival are these fraternal organizations. They, they do these uh, volunteer work all year and play a big part. Well, everybody, let's, let's hear a round of applause for uh, Steve uh, Schmidt, the uh, Boreas 69. Steve, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. All right, folks, the, uh, the parade's coming our way here. I think uh, the, uh, the color guard should be coming up any minute now. <laughs> The St. Paul Police Color Guard should be the I, I can crowd. see the flags. It's a little hard for us to see. We have a lot of people in front of us. But I can see them coming. You can hear the marching band uh, as, as the St. Paul Police Band behind them. The uh, St. Paul Police Band was formed by a trio of St. Paul Police officers celebrating its 91st year this year. You know, they've grown to 65 members. They've got police officers, volunteers, and uh, this isn't the only thing they do. They enjoy making music and representing the city of St. Paul and the St. Paul Police Department all over uh, th throughout the year. The Color Guard uh, also does a lot of this kind of work yeah. uh, year-round. And I'm starting to see uh, batons being twirled, and I can see the flag coming up. So the parade's moving at a pretty good pace. The, uh, we got started about 2 o'clock. They got here in uh, 25 minutes. Yeah, not a, not a record. This year. It's so warm, I think the parade might be slow this year. <laughs> Everybody's going to enjoy it and take their time. So here's the color guard. They're passing in front of us right now. It's the St. Paul Police Color Guard. Thank them for their service, folks. Right behind is the St. Paul Police Band we told you about. And Again, the Winter Carnival Banner. There are 65 members of the St. Paul Police Band. <laughs> the 
Yeah, we'll Brent, there's some. just a lot of tradition in this parade, isn't there? These folks have been here every year. Watch them lead the, uh, the parade. You'll see the Winter Carnival snowflakes. Each one of those snowflakes weighs 10 pounds. We should look for our good friend Warren. Warren is usually carrying one of these. I know. No, I haven't seen him today. I Sometimes haven't seen, him, seen him before. Speaking of tradition, our next group, the 4th and 5th District American Legion. For over 50 years, the local veterans of the American Legion have led the Grand Day Parade. In 2002, after 9-11, we they were proud to follow behind the police and the fire units. However, now with the men and women, women veterans still serving in harm's way, we were, they've uh, joined us now in the tradition of, uh, of leading the parade, so let's welcome them. Looks like we're gonna have some junior announcers with us this year. <laughs> Following behind the 4th and 5th District American Legion, you'll see St. Paul Mayor Chris Coleman. Mayor Coleman became the 45th mayor of St. Paul in 2006. He was sworn in for a third term in 2013. Mayor Coleman's a lifelong resident of Minnesota's capital city. He placed bridging the education gap at the core of his agenda, making sure families and children have access to quality early childhood education programs. You know, the other thing is he's quite a, a skater. He uh, did the, uh, I, I think, 100 yards of the cra crashed ice. <laughs> St. Paul City uh, Council is with us. We've got representatives from all the wards. And yeah. coming up here, we have uh, our first Grand Marshal. We have Kat Perkins. She was a top five contestant on NBC's The Voice in season six. She'll be performing today from seven to nine o'clock right here in Rice Park. Her new single, Fearless, is available on iTunes. Sure. She's coming down. We had a fire truck ahead of Kate. Cat. Cat's yeah. coming down. Now this is usually pretty popular on a nice cold day. Everybody wants to be around the uh, hot air uh, balloonless hot air balloon. Make sure you join us uh, this evening at seven o'clock. Right behind us, Cat will be performing from seven to nine. Maybe you can get her new single, Fearless. It's available on iTunes now. They're walking behind her with the uh, treasure check. Uh, the, the treasure was found last Thursday, Brent. That's uh, pretty early in the treasure hunt. Apparently, I think this might have been uh, our lucky uh, treasure hunter or skillful treasure hunter, maybe. Congratulations. Now we have the, uh, the Pioneer Press is coming up here with the, uh, the uh, they're a uh, community and uh, Carnival tradition. They challenge readers to solve that puzzle uh, to win the ten thousand uh, dollars. I'll tell you, I think it might have been a record this year. I've never heard of them uh, doing it. Well, they rarely have it done by the time this parade happens. I know. Yeah. In 1985, Pioneer Press and the Dispatched uh, merged, and in 1990, they transitioned into a morning paper and just, and they dropped the uh, Dispatch name. We have Twin Cities Public Television passing in front of us right now. Twin Cities Public Television is sponsoring Kids Day today, and they brought along World Girl, a crime-fighting word whiz. Meet World Girl after the parade at the Landmark Center. Tune into TPT every day for PBS uh, kids shows. Looks like the parade's uh, not close together this year. No. I think we're going to have the St. Saint Paul Saints next.
Well, here we have, this is car to go, I think. We got a little out of order. Car to go is uh, providing the Twin Cities on-demand transportation from point A to point B. Join the alternative transportation movement today at car2go.com. Oh, there's two of them. There's a lot of events this weekend. Folks, after you're done with this, you might want to go to the Cat Show. Here we have the St. Saint Paul Saints. Saints. The Saints are a member of the North Division of the American Associated of Independent Professional Baseball, which is not affiliated with Major League Baseball. The Saints have played their home games at Midway Stadium since 1993, when the modern day team started as a member of the Northern League. In 2006, the team was a founding member of the Modern American Association. They'll be moving into their new CHS field for the 2015 season. So folks, while you're downtown, some other events today. Uh, from uh, until four o'clock, you can go see the uh, cat show at the River Center right over next to us here. This is an annual show. It features hundreds of cats from the United States and Canada competing for the crown. The highest scoring male and female will be crowned Winter Carnival Household Pet King and Queen. We've got the Memorial Blood Center Drive. That's uh, today also from uh, 10 to 4 there in Rice Park right behind us. It's a great chance to sign up and donate blood. Uh, so if you uh, take a break from the parade, go on over. I'm sure they'll still uh, work with you. After the parade, you can stop in at the uh, St. Paul Hotel for some of the greatest hot chocolate you'll ever find. So is this Spire Credit Union here now? This is. We have Spire Credit Union. They've been serving Minnesota and Wisconsin for 81 years, with 16 locations, including one in St. Paul. The current Boreas is from Spire Credit Union. Awesome. Okay, coming up next, we should have Brugger's uh, Bagels. preferred source of complete weather coverage. Dave joined 5 Eyewitness News in 1977 and has been on the air since 1979. He oversees one of the most responsive and accurate weather tracking operations in the industry and is the region's uh, preferred source for complete weather coverage. He did a pretty good job today, don't you think? <coughs> he catches weather on 5 Eyewitness News weekdays at 6 and 6 and 10 p.m. Who do we have now? We have the Winter Carnival Royal Family, folks. Boreas is seven, uh, 79, Daniel Stoltz. And we and are here to party, as demonstrated by our East Wind, David Rodman. That was uh, Prime Minister Carolyn Blakey. We have Aurora, Queen of the Snows, Crystal Igbo Vana, as well as our winds, Daniel Lindsay, David Mon uh, Metternich, Right behind him now we have the senior royalty. The uh, 2015 senior royalty court has 57 years of senior royalty winter carnival participation. So Brent, who's who's in there this year? We have King of Winter 57, Lou Michaels, the Queen of the Northlands, Lee Chevelle, Prime Barbara Nash, Lady in Waiting, Marilyn Taylor, Prince of the Four Winds, Willie Taylor Sr., and Princess of the Four Winds, Grace Smith. Following them up is uh, one of the most popular uh, events in the uh, in the parade, the Tux Team. They are our pooper scoopers. They've been doing this for 25 years, and they've Their looked crazy good the whole antics, time. Uh, make cleaning up fun for all, and they say that the business is picking up for them this year. <laughs> Welcome the Tux Team again after 25 years. I believe we have pulling up here now our 2015 Winter Carnival Junior Royalty. 
Princess of the Snow, Maya Johnson, Princess of Ice, Sydney B uh, Bibu, and Queen of the Snowflakes, Nicole Rona. Right behind them, we have Star of Boreas. These are the past kings of the Winter Carnival, and they're joined by the past Queen of the Snows and past Prime Ministers. They continue to serve the city of St. Paul in the Winter Carnival. They're promoters, organizers, mentors of uh, future kings and uh, contributors. And uh, you know, we heard a lot about this from Steve, and these are the, the great folks who uh, continue to give back to uh, St. Paul. We have quite a few uh, star of Boreas this year. It's good to see them all out. I think the, you think the nice weather may have something to do with it? I, I, I think that may be the case, but they're keeping a good pace too. They are, they are. They're ahead of, uh, well the next groups we're gonna see, we talked about those strong paternal organizations that supported Star of Boreas being the first. Next we have the North Wind Titan Organization. These, uh, these folks are better known as the best wind, they say. The Titan organization are all former princess, princes of the North Wind. On the truck are former North Wind princesses, uh, princes and their family. They proudly represent St. Paul's North End and reputed to be the best wind group. Hail Titan, hail the North, hail Rice Street. They have the Rice Street royalty with them today. How you doing, guys? Some other things that are going on today is we have Pony Express rides from 11 to 5. And those, uh, that's today. Those are going to run, Brent, too. Sunday, the, uh, from uh, Sunday the 25th, that's tomorrow. Also the 31st. They run from 11 to 5. Uh, they're right next to uh, Landmark Center, next to the Fars, uh, Wells Fargo Ice Rink. They provide rides for children 10 years and younger. Uh, it costs $5 to go for a pony ride. That's a pretty good deal when you're in the middle of a city in the middle of winter. Yes, it is. Right now, we have the Eastwind organization passing in front of us. These are all former Eastwinds and their families, another one of the fraternal organizations of the Winter Carnival. You know, it's too bad they uh, aren't willing to dress up. I know. Well, these are the shy group, I think. They support the city in Winter Carnival. They recruit and mentor new East Winds. They're the protectors of the legend of Euros. They were granted this by King Boreas in control of the irrepressible East Wind. Today's Kids Day at Landmark Center, right across the street from us. You can bring the kids inside, take a stroll through the Landmark Center. They have uh, bouncy horses, crafts, and a stage with live entertainment. So you can, and they're gonna be doing that until six o'clock tonight. All right, cover your ears, folks. Here come the West Winds. These cowboys represent the dependable West Wind. In the legend, the West Wind is the only brother that has never defected to Vulcans. Former, this photo is all former West Wings and their families. They support the city in Winter Carnival, and it's their duty to recruit and mentor new West Wings and to protect the legend of Zephyrus and the custody of the West Wind. Coming up right behind them, we have the former South Winds and their families and their brand new South Wind bus. That's a uh, pretty wow. unique looking bus. They support the city in the Winter Carnival throughout the year. They recruit and mentor new South Winds. And they're the protectors of the legend of Notos, who was presented the balmy but unstable south wind. That's a great bus. Didn't they do a good job? That's beautiful. I think they've laid down the gauntlet for the other winds. I know, this is quite a challenge. Well, coming up behind them now, we have the uh, Order of the Royal Guard. Now, their jobs just started the, uh, to protect Boreas this week. They come up on a major confrontation next Saturday. Yes, they do. Their big event is one week from today. They haven't been historically very successful either. Not, not in this one. You know, usually we're kind of rooting for Vulcan, but it's so nice today, I don't know. This alumni organization of past St. Paul uh, 
Winter Carnival uh, Kingsguards. They were formed just after World War II when Boreas realized that his dominion was lacking a proper army to defend his realm against Vulcan Rex and his crew of dastardly deeds. Don't me just they their Don't friends and family. Hail the guards. Well, they're doing well. They've got walkers and two trucks. Yeah. You get a feeling today, folks, for how uh, how strong these organizations are and all the hard work they do for St. Paul. It's great to see them all out here on this beautiful, balmy winter day. You know, considering uh, Winter Carnival started because a New York reporter in uh, 18, uh, was it 16? 86? 18, uh, well, here we've got it to get it right. Well, folks, I think coming up right now, we have committee chair Jen Tambura, who was a 2005 uh, East Wind Princess. This is a big job being committee chair to pull all this off. Great work, Jen. She'd have been with Steve. Yes, she would have. All right, here we go. We, we have some of our visiting, visiting uh, digs. Here's our visiting dignitaries. So earlier we were telling you about how people come from festivals from around the country. We have Canada. We have Florida coming up right here, buddy, in Florida. There are others. Are there are quite a few riding on the bus. Those Aquatennial folk, it's too cold for them. They had to sit on the bus. I see San Antonio. I see Wyoming. Oh, what? oh and we have Jafal, the newest guy from South Carolina. Now there's a guy who knows how to dress for winter. Absolutely, folks. He's pulling off a seersucker suit <laughs> in St. Paul in January. That's his trademark. Although usually he's, uh, he wears flip-flops. Yeah, look know. at his did, feet. Did he consent to... Look at his to, feet. To, does he have boots on? Oh, the we 2015 see. Vulcans now are coming up. We have Volcanus Rex, the god of fire. He's the enemy of Boreas been known to say that by the great sword of Mars, I will temper the blusterings of Boreas with the heat and roar of my forces. Volcanus and his crew are tireless in their bitter resistance to the festivities of Boreas. We may hear more from them next week. Also, we have the 2009 Vulcans International Royalty. It's driven by 2009 St. Paul Winter Carnival Vulcan crew. I think that was ahead of us there, wasn't Is it? That? At the visiting digs. Oh. Uh, so surprise you, sometimes the parade is not in order. <laughs> we, we seem to have a number of Vulcans still coming. Yeah, they might be coming here. I think, folks, you are seeing the 2009, 2010. And a few other Vulcan crews. You notice the parade's moving a little slower this year than when it's uh, zero. <laughs> Vulcan's known for being shy and quiet. There's our new Vulcanus Rex yeah. and his crew. Kids, they'll paint a mustache and beard on you or a V. Vulcan's doing a great job. They also have a very strong fraternal group and do a lot of work around the city throughout the year. There we go, there we go. So I see a, I see a former oh, South Wind princess on that. Yeah. On that. Uh, One thing about a St. Paul parade, you never know who's gonna join. Now she's squealing. <laughs> now we have the royal order of Klondike Cates coming up. Welcome to 2015 Klondike Cates, Shelly Brown. She had beauty, charm, and a man who'd done her wrong. Right behind them, we have the North Star Newfoundland Club. They serve the state of Minnesota and 13 northwestern uh, counties in Wisconsin. The, pro the, the club was uh, formed to help protect the Newfoundland dogs, endorse the standard of the, of the breed. They hold events featuring 
Northfundland dogs uh, throughout the state in Wisconsin. Behind, Beautiful, big, and remarkably gentle dogs. Behind the Newfoundlands, we have the Hallux Gnomes, a marching tradition since 1940. Uh, gnomes, on, they're on loan from the West Scott Station Antiques, the keep of the gnomes. Boy Scout Troop 13 has provided the leg power since 1946. These are uh, genuine antiques. I mean, these are amazing that these uh, costumes have made it so long. Ah, I love watching little kids uh, with strings on adults leading them. <laughs> Some other events this weekend, folks, while you're downtown, is uh, we have the uh, Carnival Beer Dabbler. That's from 3.30 to 7.30 tonight. It's in the business uh, of promoting craft beer. They host craft beer festivals in Minnesota. They have a retail store uh, where you can come and get uh, gifts, obviously beer and apparel. So make sure you join them today. It's an, a ticketed event. You have to pay, but I think the, uh, you'll enjoy the uh, benefits of it. The Royal Family uh, Day Roller Skating today at uh, Saints North Roller Rink. That's that's good till 8 o'clock tonight. We uh, got a uh, perpetual favorite coming up next, folks. We have the Twin Cities Unicycle Club. The Twin Cities Unicycle Club is the largest and oldest unicycle club in Minnesota with over 200 unicyclists. Membership is open to anyone who is interested in unicycling. The club practices year-round at various locations and times around the Twin Cities. Practices include individual learning, group riding, unicycle hockey, and basketball, that, those seem tough, juggling, unicycle racing, and more. As riders master skill after skill, their self-esteem increases. Unicycling improves physical fitness and develops both balance and coordination. Twin Cities Unicycle Club has many of the best individuals and pair riders in the world. They have taken many national and world titles, including titles in artistic freestyle, artistic pairs, and unicycle racing. Members hold over 30 national titles and over 15 world championship titles. Now, this is an impressive group. They've been very successful in the Twin Cities. I know a number of people have participated in it. Hard to imagine doing, however. And a monkey unicyclist appears to be leading the way this year. Well, they're of all ages, as you said. Whoa, it looks tough. It looks tough. You know, it somewhat seems like just a bad idea. Look at this. Look at these guys. Wow, look at that. Let's hear it, folks. This is pretty impressive. Don't forget, this is the end of the parade. They've been doing this for a mile. Yes. Look at these two ladies. Well, just to remind you, well, they're finishing up. To remind you again, we've got uh, Cat Perkins uh, this evening, 7 to 9, right behind us. The, uh, a, another great event. You know, we just saw the Klondike Cates go through. Woo! They have uh, their performance tonight at the uh, Doubletree uh, Hilton. That's from 7.30 to 10. I'll tell you, this is something to see, to watch uh, Cates try to outdo one another yeah. singing. Klondike Cates are great entertainers. You don't want to miss that. It's a lot of fun. Rock the Palace tonight from uh, 8 o'clock until sometime Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. This is at the Amsterdam uh, Bar Hall. You, you're welcome to a, this giant dance party that's hosted by uh, the Royal Guard, the Order of Royal Guard. Up next, folks, we have our old organization. We have the Minneapolis Aquatennial coming. The Minneapolis, uh, Minneapolis Aquatennial Ambassador Organization is a community-based leadership and scholarship program. All of the ambassadors make appearances all over the state, country, and Canada, creating and maintaining festival and civic relationships along the way. This year's Commodore is Dave Orthy. The Queen of the Lakes is Laura Schwartz. We have Je uh, Captain Jennifer Kerr, her Princess Morgan Sh uh, Shiler, Captain Brian Thomas May, and Princess Sonia Birdall. That group's having a lot of fun this year. We've heard great things about the job they're doing. As we talked about uh, when Steve was here, Winter Carnival and Aquatennial attend uh, a lot of the things you've been hearing about together. And uh, these two groups have been uh, 
Tra traveling uh, the cities to st uh, state together. Now they're going to start going out of the country. Yeah, a couple, couple of weeks, they head, weeks. To, they head up to Canada. That's right. But well, we've got the uh, Minneapolis Aquatennial uh, Senior Ambassadors joining us now. Looking at Senior Commodore Bob Marabella, Senior Queen Mary and Seth, Senior Vice Commodore Alan Johnson, and Senior Princess Judy Johnson. I think these guys are having a good time too. I'll say. Well, here comes the state fan. Those two giant gophers are Fairborn and Fairchild. They're the official mascots of the fair. With them is the past uh, Minneapolis uh, Princess and the 2014-2015 Princess K of the Milky Way, uh, Jenny Haler. She's representing the Midway Dairy Association. The Minnesota State Fair is something we can all be proud of because it's the biggest 12-day fair in the whole North American continent. Each year, over a million and a half people visit the State Fair to see the exhibits ride the carnival rides and eat the food on a stick. There's so much to do at the State Fair. It's a world-class event showcase for agriculture, industry, technology, and entertainment. So here come our visiting royalty. These are all the visiting ambassadors for over 25 years. Ambassadors coming from surrounding communities in both Minnesota and Wisconsin have come to the St. Paul Winter Carnival. These 90-plus young women come from as far as Osseo, Wisconsin, Moose Lake, Minnesota, and as close as Hopkins, New Brighton, and Woodbury. Their weekend takes in all of the Winter Carnival fun, and they have a great time. Next, we have Minnesota Furs. Minnesota Furs is a nonprofit organization focused on providing neutral and safe environments for fans and artists of anthropomorphic animals. They encourage social awareness and help form new friendships while inspiring individual growth. Coming up behind them, we have the commemorative Air Force uh, Minnesota Wings. Steve Schumacher, uh, Schumacher is with them. We met him earlier today. This is a commemorative Air Force Minnesota wing of the Minnesota Historical Society's Historic Fort Snelling and World War II Historical Reenactment Society. They present a tribute to Minnesota's military history and its veterans. They feature an authentic 1930s U.S. Army uh, color guard, vintage military vehicles, and reenactors in authentic gear and uniforms from past conflicts. They're founded in 1971. Uh, the Commemorative Air Force Minnesota Wing is based at Fleming Field in South St. Paul. The wing offers history, uh, flies in actual World War II warplanes, as, as well as operating a museum and restored mil military vehicles. Several of them you can see right here today. <coughs> and there I see Steve, he's right in front of us right now. Yep. So when Steve's not building floats, he's busy doing this. Well, next we got another group coming up. This is one of my favorites, the New Brighton Stockyard Days. New Brighton used to be where uh, they stopped off to water the uh, cattle so they could, uh, and feed them a little bit, get their weight up before they brought them into St. Paul to be uh, slaughtered. So the New Brighton Stockyards, they were established in 19, in 18, rather, 89. Now they no longer exist, but they contributed to the history of New Brighton. The award-winning New Brighton float carries the Stockyard Days theme with fence rail saddles, cowboy hats. It's decorated with silver and purple metallic petals and trim. In 1991, the New Brighton celebration was combined with the famous antique car run from New London to New Brighton, Minnesota. The car run is patterned after the London to Brighton, England run, dating back to 1896. Stockyard days will be celebrated August 2nd to 10th this year. They're looking warm. Those look suspiciously like Vulcan. They really do. I don't know about that. Well, here comes the Memorial the Blood Plant Center. <laughs> <laughs> for me, easy for me to say. Yeah. Memorial Blood Center van. 
This bloodmobile carries hope to those in need. It's a real lifesaver, and they really want to encourage everyone. Donate blood with local Memorial Blood Centers. Schedule your donation today at mbc.org. That's mbc.org. Minnesota's local independent blood center. This is Minnesota's local independent blood center, and it provides life-saving products to local hospitals. Their motto is connecting people and saving lives. Donate blood, everybody. You can see written on the side of their uh, bus there all the reasons why you should. You know, tomorrow there's some other great uh, activities you can take part in. Uh, we've got the uh, snow park at the fair, or the giant snow slide. That's going to be open from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. At, that's at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. It's uh, Vulcan Fun Day at Snow Park at the fair, so there'll be a lot to do there. Not that I would ever encourage you to look away from the parade, but right now we have the pie eating contest wow. starting in just a few minutes. So here we have the Institute of Navigation autonomous snowplow competition. This is run by the Institute of Navigation North Star Section. It's a student competition in which, uh, which challenges science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So I'm guessing those run themselves. The students design these robotic snowplows using state-of-the-art navigation technology such as GPS, uh, LIDAR, which is uh, Laser uses a laser to light up the target and measure the returning light. Next up, folks, we have one of our visiting festivals from the uh, southeast of us here, the Lacrosse Festival and Oktoberfest. The Lacrosse Oktoberfest float has their Festmaster and Frau, Scott and Sue Horn, Miss Lacrosse Oktoberfest, Audra Fuchsel, Mrs. Oktoberfest, Sue Dillenbeck, and members of the Grenadier Corps who are walking alongside. Well, I think they're all walking. It looks like it. <laughs> Be sure to enjoy Oktoberfest in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's October 1st through the 4th in 2015. This is probably the best Oktoberfest this side of Germany. I would think so. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> I've been there a couple times. They brought a large group this year. They did. Once again, folks, that's October 1st through the 4th for Oktoberfest, and that's down just a couple of hours south of us in La Crosse, Wisconsin. They have to be pretty grateful for this weather. I've seen some pretty red legs in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up behind them, we have the St. Paul Public Library Bookmobile. St. Paul, uh, this service dates back to 1917. The current bookmobile visits 40 to 50 sites every two weeks. Through its visibility and mobility, the Bookmobile raises awareness and appreciation of the St. Paul Public Library among the residents of the city. They by appearing at numerous community festivals, events, and parades. They're here with us every year. In fact, we see them in just about every parade. Well, if you don't get a chance to look at the Landmark Center today after the parade, you can do it tomorrow. They'll be open from 12 to 1. Here we have Captain Ken's 1923 Ahern's Fox Antique Fire Engine. This engine served as the St. Paul Fire Department from 1923 until 1954 and has appeared in Winter Carnival Parade since 1981. The Highland Central Capital Squirt Sea Team is, with, is marching with the fire engine today. Coming up behind, we have uh, Glenwood Waterama. They're bringing greetings, greetings to us from uh, Water, Waterama's royalty. We have Queen Jordan, Princess Mackenzie and Katie, Junior Queen Sophia, Junior Princess Kia. They want to invite all of you to their 60th Waterama, and that's the last full weekend in July. That's another fun event. I've, I've been to that one, too. That is absolutely beautiful there in Glenwood. They're looking warm. 
Can almost go swimming today. Next group is Adopt a Husky. This is what you need, Brent. Yeah. Two, two young children and a husky. I'd, a giant dog would fit in our house so perfectly right now. <laughs> These are beautiful dogs, though. Adopt a, a Husky, Inc. is a nonprofit 501c3 organization that's devoted to uh, rehoming abandoned and stray Siberian husky, huskies through a network of foster homes. They really are beautiful dogs. Oh, they are. These volunteers have successfully placed over 1,700 deserving dogs ranging in age from 12 years down to puppies. You know, it's sad too if they don't find a home. They're, the only crime these dogs have committed is not having been raised in an environment that understood their breed. They work with shelters in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. Here's the St. Paul Regional Labor Federation. The St. Paul Regional Labor Federation unites more than 55,000 union members in the four counties of the East Metro area. Although the work that the union members do has changed throughout the years, their commi commitment to working to improve our commitment is, our community is consistent. Here's some of the things they do, blood drives, credit, Oh, we have a horse coming up here. I'm not sure who's with it. Is this Miss America, maybe? I'm looking. I think this might be the Miss America, Miss Minnesota Scholarship pageant. They have their name in the back. <laughs> well, that's the IBEW. Oh, that's the rest of that group. All right. Well, maybe they're coming. Here they come. They're a little more obvious. They have crowns. Uh, that, didn't, that didn't look like them. So coming up, we have Savannah Cole. She's Miss Minnesota 2014. Lauren Johnson, Miss St. Paul 2015. And Catherine uh, Cooper's Miss St. Paul's Outstanding Teen 2015. These young women are from the uh, Miss America, Miss Minnesota Scholarship pageant. I love how these ladies all wave at me. I think they just came to see us. People are doing the best to keep us from seeing the, them. <laughs> our our uh, view quarters closing rapidly. All right, and uh, up next, more of the same group. Oh. Okay, next we have the St. Paul Public Schools. It's the St. Paul Public School staff, students, and families. They wish everyone a great winter carnival and a fantastic school year. I have a daughter in the St. Paul Public Schools, so I appreciate the work you guys are doing. You suppose this uh, bus is representative of it? I think so. <laughs> Tomorrow from 3 o'clock to 4.15, the St. Paul Civic Symphony will be in the uh, Landmark Center across the street from us. This is a free concert of light uh, classics. That's something you'll want to take advantage of. It's uh, beautiful in there and a great uh, symphony. Coming up on us now, we have Robbinsdale Whizbang Days. Robbinsdale will be celebrating its 67th annual Festival Whizbang Days, which is celebrated the second weekend in July. Whizbang Days is a community-sponsored city celebration that honors the small-town caring attitude that our residents have and Captain Billy's Whizbang publication that it was founded for. 
Now, Brent, here's an event that is an annual event that I was not aware of. Did you know that the Vulcans play the guard in a hockey? No, oh, I That's did something to see. Whoa. Well, here's a popular group every day. The St. Paul Bouncing Team. They're a nonprofit organization that performs aerial acrobatics for public and private social events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting fact. It's inspired by an Eskimo hunting tradition. And this team has been entertaining crowds for more than 120 years. So do you suppose that's how they found game? Threw them up in the air and looked for them? I, that's, that's as good a guess as I can come up with. Well, it explains there why they're always happy to be in uh, the winter carnival parades. Yeah. It's their uh, Eskimo tradition. Getting back to what I said, the, uh, this hockey game must be something. Looks like they're going to do it again. I'll pass. <laughs> well, here comes a remnant of summer, too. Something to look forward to, the St. Paul Yacht Club. St. Paul Yacht Club's been in the service since 1912 on Harriet Island. They're a nonprofit that was opened by their members and dedicated to safe and affordable boating for all. They have a slip available from, uh, from small craft to 50 feet and are open to the public for your water sports enjoyment. Watch for their boat show this summer. 150 slips in two harbors. By the way, I think I misspoke earlier. I said the pie eating contest was starting in a half hour. It's starting in one week and a half hour. <laughs> it's January 31st, right. not today. Well, getting back to this, did you know that the uh, Vulcan played the guard at hockey? I did not. I did not. 4.45 uh, tomorrow to 7 p.m. Apparently, it's a pretty slow game. Uh, I, I have a hard time believing that either of those organiza uh, organizations can field two fit teams. Uh, don't, be, don't be confused by those times, folks. That's just going to be very slow skating. There, there's going to be a lot of breaks, I would imagine. Here comes Red Wing, Brent. Yeah, please welcome the Red Wing Royal Ambassadors, Carly, Kelsey, and Haley. That's a great float. Some father's backyard got raided. <laughs> they invite you to join them in Red Wing for River City Days the first weekend of August. Well, coming up right behind them, right on their tail, is uh, K102, the world's toughest radio sponsor. Get, get ready to go out west for a, the night. The world's toughest rodeo bucks into XL Energy Center January 30th and 31st. They feature the top cowboys competing, plus Barkle Racing Cowgirls. We have Allied Advertising Inc. here with uh, Sp the SpongeBob movie, a movie I'm sure I'll be seeing since I have a six-year-old and a one-year-old. SpongeBob SquarePants comes ashore for his most super heroic adventure, the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. SpongeBob will be going on a quest to discover a stolen recipe that takes him to our dimension, our world, where he tangles with a pirate. It looks like we have a new entry. I'd say we, it looks like we have the West St. Paul float. This is the West St. Paul royalty joining us today. It's another great community festival. We have uh, all of their uh, princesses and ambassadors uh, with us today. Yep, I see. Uh, it looks like we have Alexis, Lauren, Elena, and Celia.
Up next, we have the Farmington Royal Ambassadors. Guys, back up, Elias. Back up. The 2014-15 Farm, uh, Farmington, Royal, or Farmington Royal Ambassadors are the Miss Ambassadors, uh, Mauricia, Jen, and Anna. Junior Ambassadors, Cami, Jade, and Sophie. And the Little Ambassadors, Faith, Madison, and Brianna. They invite you to join them uh, the third week of June for Farmington Do Days. So folks, if you like the bouncing team, this Friday, January 30th at 6 p.m. from 6 to 9, if you join us at Landmark Center, you can try out for the St. Paul bouncing team. And by join us, I don't literally mean us. No, I will not be bouncing. Coming up behind uh, Farmington, we have Harding High School Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. The other thing that's happening on Friday, uh, we have the Devon uh, Worley Band. Their Friday, uh, January 30th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Rice Park right behind us. The Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Group from Harding High School, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, and uh, marching unit color guard. There's 200 cadets. We can hear them playing. They're coming up. Right behind them is the Harding uh, High School drum line. The Harding High School drum line is made up of approximately 30 percussionists uh, from grades 9 through 12. This ensemble is a performing group that executes a minimum of 10 appearances a year, including parades. This group is led by band director Jennifer Gruppner, drumline coordinator Robert Pilot, and drum instructor Roger Swanson. Well, folks, this is gonna be a fun week. There's just so much to do. Make sure you go online and check these uh, Winter Carnival events. We've got the Kate Arctic Sizzle Cabaret. That's uh, next Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Clubhouse. At, uh, that's 1079 uh, Rice Street. We've got Ooh. snowball soccer. That's coming up Saturday, next Saturday from 10 in the morning to 5 at Como Park. That's another fun event, a lot of fun to watch. More Pony Express rides next Saturday as well. Those will be here next to the uh, skating rink. Looks like we have the Ramsey County Sheriff's Fright Farm Haunted House. The Fright Farm Haunted House is run by the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department. It's open on Fridays and Saturdays in October. Please see their website, www.frightfarm.org. All proceeds from the Fright Farm are donated to the Ramsey County Sheriff's Foundation, supporting initiatives relating to youth, community outreach, and public safety. The Sheriff was established in 1849. It was Minnesota's first law enform uh, enforcement agency. It has over 400 dedicated men and women, and they provide full police services to the seven contract communities. They operate the pretrial detention facility and perform a host of other court services. This is quite a haunted house, and it, it's, uh, it's the real deal. It's a scary looking guy there. If you like to be frightened, you won't want to miss this one. We have the uh, yeah. We have the uh, Pyrgent Norwegian Dancers, St. Paul Sons of Norway Children's Group. Uh, they've entertained throughout the U.S. from Anchorage to Orlando and throughout Minnesota, especially the Festival of Nations in St. Paul. Their mascot troll Loki watches over the spark sleds. In warmer weather, they dance in traditional Norwegian national bunads. They're all part of Norwegian heritage and all celebrated by St. Paul Sons of Norway kids. 
There's their mascot troll. It's so great to see you. Well, we have another community coming up right behind them, the uh, Richfield Junior uh, Ambassadors. They're representing Richfield's 4th of July celebration. Here they are, your 2014 and 2015 Richfield Ambassadors. The Ambassadors uh, Queen's visit this weekend at the Winter Carnival was sponsored by the Richfield Bloomington Credit uh, Union. Behind them, we have You Move Me. You Move Me offers full service moving with the number one focus on making your move stress free. They have a great team ready to help. You know, Brian, it looks like a couple of them could be part of the next group that's coming up behind them. Behind them, we have You 1 800 Got Junk. Fits in well with uh, the uh, Powder Puff Clown Club that's coming up right behind, behind them. This is an all volunteer nonprofit organization that was founded in 1967. They're based uh, on the belief that everyone should have a reason to smile if just for a moment. Their goal is to spread joy and healing laughter. They do this through parades, visiting nursing uh, centers, and uh, children's groups. You can contact them about coming to one of your events or find out how they can, how you become a, you can become a clown and be part of the uh, Powerpuff Clown Club. Behind them, we have the uh, North Hudson Pepper Fest, King Ken, Queen Jordan, and Princess, uh, Princesses Julia, Emma, and Hunter from the village of North Hudson are honored to attend King Boreas's Grand Day Parade. In North Hudson, they celebrate their community's strong Italian heritage with a festival that was originally put on by a group of neighbors to raise funds to build an elementary school. The three-day festival still continues and is filled with many fun events, including a parade, bands, and numerous food and eating contests. Anyone from this world knows includes a spaghetti eating contest that is somewhat legendary. That's right. The monies raised are still donated locally each year. You're invited to join them. August 14th through 16th, 2015, for some hot fun this summer. Now we have the Minnesota Historical Society. Uh, they've been sharing stories of uh, Minnesotans for over 165 years through their historic sites, interactive museums, presentation, and collections. Their newest member is the History Hound. Here he is right here. You don't see that often, a blue, blue head on a yellow dog. You can learn more at mnhs.org. We got a little lull here in the parade. I think this next group's coming up. Is this U.S. Bank? Yes. U.S. Bank's committed to supporting the programs and organizations that enrich the quality of life for our neighbors. Become one of uh, our community, because when our community succeeds, everyone wins. U.S. Bank, where all of us are serving you. Coming up next, it looks like we have the United States Postal Service. Uh, the St. Paul Postal Office. The St. Paul Postmaster, Robert, uh, Robert Ren uh, Renosa, leads a contingent representing the U.S. Postal Service's Northland District. Volunteers advertise many products and services that are offered on USPS.com. The Northland District encompasses more than 90,000 square miles in Minnesota and western Wisconsin. More than 12,000 employees process and deliver mail to serve nearly 6 million customers. 
The Northland District is a leader in the use of flex fuel technology with approximately 1,100 flex fuel vehicles in their delivery fleet. The Postal Service receives no tax dollars for operating expenses and relies on the sale of postage, products, and services to fund its operations. Remember to visit www.usps.com for all your postal needs. Well, we now have the Osmond Shrine. They're celebrating 91 years of Shrine Circus in St. Paul this year. This is the longest running Shrine Circus in North America. Osmond Shrine is represented by its Legion of Honor, followed by the potentate, Roger uh, Berge. Some of the units represented today are sh sheiks, provosts, chanters, clowns, director staff, drum and bugle. And we'll have to see how much we have today in the parade. They're, they're it, still coming. I can yes. see them quite, quite some I don't hear any here. noise, though, so I don't know if we have the uh, cycles or the mighty mites with us this year. The Shriners uh, totally support 22 Shrine Hospitals for Children, which provide specialized care to children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and palate. All their services are provided at no charge because of all the volunteer work these folks do and all the money they raise. The uh, drum and bugle corps of the Osmond Shriners is, uh, is a tradition that dates back to 1921. Their first time was in, uh, the first time, I, actually I think it dates back to 1916. First time was in 1916 with nine drummers. There are over 100,000 people that saw the VJ parade on August 15th, 1945. And this group continues to play in 20 to 25 parades each year. The Osmond uh, Cycle Corps is a percussion drill team that's made up of Shrine Masons. They're always looking for new members with a passion for riding and performing. We also have the Osmond, well, I hope we have the Osmond Mighty Mites. We would have two 1932 Ford Street Rods, four 36 Ford Cabriolets, They also have three micro cup cars like you see in a NASCAR event. In 2008, they won first place in the showmanship category at the Midwest Shrine Association meeting. talked about uh, next uh, Saturday night, the potential overthrow of Boreas. After that, there's a fireworks show. You can see it from the Crown Plaza Hotel. You want to make sure not to miss this spectacular end to the St. Paul Winter Carnival. And from everything we hear, uh, Boreas will be taking control back from Vulcanus, and at least in terms of the weather next week. Uh, so yes, come back yes. for winter. So this firework display is launched from the uh, uh, Raspberry Island shortly, about 15 minutes or so after uh, the overthrow of uh, Boreas. We do hear it come the Shriners, I hear them. So are these the Mighty Mites now? I, I believe it sounded like them. I haven't laid eyes on them. Yes, I, I think I see them in front of us. These would be the... The, uh, there's looks like our the street two, rods. Yeah, yeah the, the 32 two 32 Ford. Fords and the 430, uh, 1936 uh, Ford Cabriolets. You have micro cup cars. You can see them uh, in a NASCAR event. You'll see these people doing uh, figure eights, leapfrogs, circles, crisscrosses, and more. 
Those cars will do 30 miles per hour in a straightaway. You know, as the cars start driving, everybody moves in to make it safer. <laughs> Look at this. I think we have the orchestra coming up behind. They're playing out from inside of a car. I think they've wisely held back a little bit from the uh, cars. <laughs> Minnesota Orchestra for 111 years uh, has played the greatest orchestral music for the greatest audience in the world, the people of Minnesota. You want to make sure to visit their newly remodeled hall in Minneapolis. Behind the orchestra, you'll find the Northeast Minneapolis Ambassador Program. Please welcome the Northeast Minneapolis Program. You have Miss Alana, Melissa, De uh, Delphine, Maria, Junior Miss Diana and Sophia, and Junior Ian and Chiara. See Northwest, see the world is truly depicted in this uh, float. It is a city on wheels with replicas of many of the churches and landmarks, such as the Hennepin Avenue Bridge. Here comes, a, by volunteers. here comes a pizza, pizza shop uh, west from West St. Paul. They're a well-known business. You can follow them on Instagram or like them on Facebook. But best of all, stop by at 1037 Dodd Road in West St. Paul and have some great pizza. Right by, uh, behind the pizza shop, we have Minnesota Transportation Museum. Their bus is a 1954 GM Classic Twin City Line bus that ran between St. Paul and Minneapolis. Minnesota Transportation Museum is a nonprofit volunteer organization, and their goals are to preserve and educate about trains and buses. Well, folks, if you join us for Cat Perkins tonight uh, at 7 o'clock, you might have a, a very fun experience and get to see a, uh, a concert in the snow. They've been predicting snow, and it looks like uh, it's clouding over. Temperature's still pretty warm, but it wouldn't take much in Minnesota to get down there. Okay, Brian, looks like we have Woodbury coming up here. Uh, Woodbury Days is celebrated the last weekend in August. So we have Miss Woodbury, the princesses, little Miss Woodbury, their little princesses and their senior queen with us today. All right, looks like the Lions Club uh, International 5 and at the 6 is, uh, is coming up next. We have the, uh, they're the largest service organization in the world, the Lions Club International is. They have 1.35 million volunteer members in 206 countries in geographic areas. Um, and they are different in many ways, but they share a core belief, community is what we make it, we serve. It's quite a float. Yeah, great costume. Yeah. Here comes the Western Saddle Clubs Association. They're the ambassadors for the Western Saddle Clubs Association representing the five state area. The 2014-15 royalty are with us today. We have Queen Lee Larson, Princess Morgan uh, Pileska, Ms. Horsemanship Julie Linder, 
Ms. Games, Haley uh, Syke, and Miss Congeniality, Melissa Williams. They promote horses as a fun family activity. Coming up next, we have the Cottage Grove Strawberry Fest. The Cottage Grove Strawberry Fest ambassadors are excited to be attending the Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade today. They invite everyone to come and participate at the Strawberry Festival June 19th and to the 21st. Custom Remodelers, Inc. is a family-owned business that has been proudly serving Minnesota and Western Wisconsin for 25 years. We thank them for joining us today. And coming in right behind is the Raspberry Festival from Hopkins. The Hosp Hopkins Raspberry Festival just celebrated their 80th festival the third weekend in July. They invite all of you to celebrate with them in America's Raspberry Capital next summer. They host one of the state's largest parades and nine full days of events for all ages and interests. Let's see their junior royalty, Prince Hunter, Princess uh, Talia, Talia, Talila, uh, King Nathan, and Queen Chloe. Their senior ambassadors, Mary Kay and Glenn, Princess Kaya and McKenna, and Queen Sally. Folks, it looks like that's the end of the uh, parade. We want to thank you for joining SPNN today for the St. Paul Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade. Be sure to join us next Saturday at 5.30 for the Torchlight Parade. We hope you all enjoy the rest of the 129th Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on Earth. Have a great night. Thank you, everybody.